Hi everyone, this is Duplex. Welcome back. Today I want to go over solar power. Uh, since we do need to expand our power grid a bit, um, we're still running off of the three steam power lines that we put up fairly early in the game. Um, but I'd like to start to reduce my reliance on this so that I can stop spending petroleum on solid fuel and stop using coal for that. Um, <clears throat> so solar power is a little bit more, well, solar power has got several advantages. Um, tell you what, let me get into that in, in a little bit. First of all, let's just talk about it in, in general terms. Um, solar power, a solar power array has two components. One are the solar panels themselves. Those take copper, steel, and green circuits to build. And the other necessary component are accumulators, um, which are essentially batteries that will store electricity when it's not being used. So let me head down here where you can see that I've set up a small little factory that is making solar panels here and accumulators over here. And I have these going into the bot network and um, I set these to make up to 500 of each. Uh, they take 10 seconds each to craft, so um, you want to get this started when you start thinking about solar power and then just let it run for a while um, because it'll take some time to accumulate the components that you're going to need. Um, and then you can slowly start expanding the grid. Now, the reason why you need batteries, the accumulators, of course, is that the solar panels only produce power during the day. Um, now, the day is, in, at least as far as Factorio is concerned, um, the day is about, I want to say, 60 to 70 percent of the time. Um, 12,500 ticks, uh, there are 60 seconds in a tick, so um, you can do the math, but um, in the game, day lasts 12,500 ticks, uh, dawn and dusk last, last 5,000 ticks each, and that's where you're going to go from full sunlight to zero, or from zero to full, and then pure nighttime is 2,500 ticks. All right, so that's so about half of the time is full daylight, and half of the time you're transitioning to or from darkness, and then there's a, a small portion that is um, completely dark. You know, the completely dark part is twenty uh, percent of the full daylight part, and then you have that those two transitional periods. So what our objective is is to have enough solar panels so that you can not only produce the energy that you need to power the base, but also to produce enough energy to charge the batteries, which will then in turn power the base when it's dark. Um, and so there's some math that goes along with it. Fortunately, uh, some smart people have already done all the math. And I can tell you that the, the optimal ratio of accumulators to solar panels is 21 to 25. Okay, so that of course assumes that you're going to be having a constant power draw. Now obviously if, if nighttime comes and you have a big biter attack and all your laser turrets activate, you're going to draw more power at night than you would maybe during the rest of the day and then things are not going to quite work out. But if you're drawing a constant amount of power, then you want to have approximately 21 accumulators for every 25 solar panels. And that that's the right amount to be able to provide enough to provide a constant output of power through the day and through the night without the batteries completely running dry. Okay, so that's a, a 0 0.84 ratio. So there, you know, there are a few ways that you could design these things and I'll grab a couple stacks here. We're going to use bots to build this, but I'll demonstrate a few things here. Um, 
another good component to have when you're doing solar are substations. Um, substations are the fourth tier of power poles. The nice thing about substations is that, as you can see, they cover a large, a large area. And when you connect them, you get these, you get these big grids of complete coverage. Okay. So when you're putting down, when you're building your solar and your accumulator arrays, it's, I think it's better to use substations, um, you know, as opposed to a medium electric pole, if you're going to do it like that. Um, the reason why the power poles are not as good is because the solar panels are three by three, right? So there's, there's not really a good way to, um, to tile in a lot of solar panels <clears throat> without leaving big gaps for the, uh, for the power poles. Let me pick that up. Um, the large power poles obviously are fairly useless because they took up a lot of space and they have a very small range. You know, those are transmission lines. So the substations are really good. And, and most of the, most of the good designs that you're going to see for solar are going to use substations. So you can put down one of those and then you can put, uh, let's see, three of those on each side. And, you know, so you can pack in a lot of solar panels on a single substation. Um, and that'll give you the most dense arrangement of panels. Now, accumulators are two by two. Okay, so there's a panel and there's an accumulator. All right, so I think they did this purposely to make it difficult to come up with a really um, pleasing combination of panels and accumulators. <coughs> um, so that, that 21 to 25 ratio that I talked about, again, 21 accumulators and 25 panels, that'll give you about a megawatt of power, a, a little bit more than a megawatt of constant draw. Okay, so in our base right now, we, we have 115 megawatts of capacity. Um, so, you know, right now we're using about 60. So if we were going to power the whole base with solar, then we would need 60 times 21. So we would need about 1,200 accumulators and, you know, about 1,500 solar panels, um, which is a lot. Um, but that's why I said that it's a good idea just to set up something like this and just start to produce them in mass quantities. Um, in fact, I, I think we could even double this. Let's get some landfill in here. Okay, I didn't need to go that far. Let's delete that. Okay. And the accumulators just use iron plates and, and batteries. So the ingredients are, the ingredients for solar are fairly cheap, uh, which makes getting into them early in the game uh, a reasonable option. Okay, but again, you'll need to you'll need to run this for a while before you have enough to to build any appreciable amount of output. Um, so I actually started this a little while ago. So I've got uh, let's see how many do I have? Uh, let's go here. Okay, so I've got 272 accumulators and 324 solar panels. So not a whole heck of a lot, but it's something. Um, and I'm still kind of short on sulfuric acid. Why is that? I think I'm just not making enough. I've got plenty of petroleum now since we did our coal liquefaction setup. Oh, speaking of that, I did, um, I did triple it or quadruple it right from the initial setup. So I've got four times the initial setup running now. 
Um, so we got we got plenty of petroleum. Uh, so it might help if I beefed up my production of sulfuric acid. So let's head up here and see what we can do there. I love my Spider-Tron. I think I'm going to get a t-shirt that says I love Spider-Tron. Okay. So this is making two every one second. This needs five every one second. All right, so if I made more sulfur, that would help. I should be able to squeeze it in right here. Okay, wall's doing fine. set this up without messing up any of my other plumbing. Okay, and then we need water there. Okay, now that's fine. Then let's bring that up here. So that's not going to be a massive increase, but it should be roughly double what I was getting before. And while I'm here, let's replace these, these primitive steel furnaces with a couple of electric furnaces. Where did they go? Here we go. There. And then we won't need coal for that anymore. Okay, that's a little better. Okay, so there's a couple different approaches you can take uh, with the solar power. Um, one fairly simple one would be just to have two separate areas. Have one where you just throw down tons of solar panels and then have another area where you throw down the accumulators and that way you can very precisely control the ratio. Um, nothing really wrong with that except then you, except you just have to maintain two different, uh, two different areas. Um, the other way to do it is try to find some combination of solar panels and accumulators that gets you as close as possible to the right ratio, you know? Um, and I've tried, you know, you could build something like this you know, and just try to do the math and play a little Tetris with it until you get a nice, a nice arrangement that gets close to that 21 to 25 ratio. Um, I've tried to design my own um, tileable arrays like this before, and I didn't have much success. So <clears throat> what I've done is... Um, I've decided to stand on the shoulders of giants when it comes to solar power. And I borrowed a blueprint from Madzuri. I think I've mentioned Madzuri before. Um, and he's got this Mark IV solar build. Um, I'm not sure if he's, I don't, 
I didn't check lately if there's a newer version, but as far as I know, this is the latest and greatest version. Uh, so this one has 104, each one of these has 104 solar panels to 88 accumulators. So if we take 88 divided by 104, that's 0 0.846, right? And the optimal ratio is 0 0.84, uh, 21 divided by 25. That's 0 0.84. So it is just slightly, it's slightly heavy on accumulators. Um, but that's not bad because having, having extra battery storage, I think, you know, if you're not going to match the ratio, I think having extra battery is better than having extra panels. Um, because like I said, if you get, you know, if you get a biter attack during the night and you have a lot of laser turrets firing off, that can use up a lot of power. So I think having some extra, uh, some extra power stored is, you know, is a more conservative path to take. So, um, and then the other thing that you'll notice is that this design has a roboport in the center. Um, and it uses four substations, um, and it's tileable. So you can just connect these one after another. Uh, the roboports will be in range of the other. So once you get the first one built, uh, just from map view, anytime you need more power, you just plop down a few more of them and your robots will take care of it for you. Um, <clears throat> so if the, if the 2125 gives us about one megawatt, uh, this will give us about four megawatts of power. Constant draw, because it's approximately four times as much. Um, 21 times four accumulators is 84, and then 25 times four solar panels is 100. So it's a, this will give us a little bit over four megawatts of constant power for each one of these. So, <clears throat> If you're going to go this route, the first thing you want to do is pick out pick out a very large area <laughs> that you can build into and expand. So I think actually right here is where I want to start building solar. I don't think that this part of the base is going to be going any further north than where I am. And I've, I have a lot of room up here that's uh, relatively free of obstruction except for some you know, except for some cliffs, but the bots can take care of the cliffs as well, since I'm, since I've got cliff explosives available. So I'm going to put down the first of these right here. Make sure we're in range of the robo network. And we'll plop it down. Since I have some of the materials, the, my personal bots will get started with that. I'll just go ahead and dump that stuff out. Uh, let's see, I had some substations too. Yeah, I'll get rid of those. I don't really need the substations on my person. Okay, so the bots will come and build this. And then as the substations get put down, it'll get itself powered up. So you just want to make sure that you're you just want to make sure that you're building all of these items automatically and that they're all going into provider chests so that the bots have access to them. Now, theoretically, one could just paste down like a hundred of these and then just let the bots take their time building it. Um, but I think it's better to do it in smaller chunks. Because if you put down a bunch all at once, and if you don't have all of the parts available, then you're going to end up with a bunch of partially complete ones. And then, you know, the bot networks might not be joined up. You might not have substations, so you might have a bunch of panels and stuff put down that are not connected to the grid. Um, so I think it's better just to, you know, to build it um, small sections at a time. Okay, and now we can see here. We're generating 6.2 megawatts from the solar panels, right? Now remember the four megawatts that I said was constant draw. So that means you're going to have to, you're going to have to consume less power than the solar panels can provide so that you have extra power to charge the accumulators, right? And right now the accumulators are, 
the accumulators are charged. So we have 440 megajoules in those accumulators. They are not providing any, any energy right now because we're able to produce um, more than we're able to produce what we need from the panels and the steam engines. And the steam engines will continue to remain active um, even if we have solar panels. The game will kind of split power production between between solar and steam and nuclear if you have you know if you have several different um, production methods at the same time. So if you want to get off of steam completely, then you need to shut it off. All right, and then for the next one, you just come up here, you line up the three accumulators on the edge, like that, and plop down another one. Let me get this turret out of the way. That's an old one. That one's, he's been around for a long time. And let's put down two more. I don't think I have enough materials to build us to build two more, but we'll see what happens. All right, and then you just wait for the construction bots to take care of it. Now that I'm starting to do this, I think I'll probably put more construction bots into the network. I only have 350 right now, so I think I'll take that up to 500 to allow this kind of thing to go a little more quickly. So let's go down to the bot area so I can change that setting. Yeah, I can see that my batteries are getting more acid now. Yeah, it looks like it looks like the batteries are going to limit my production for the time being. So I, I think we need to expand acid production yet again. All right, so let's increase that to 500. And especially as that array, um, as that solar array gets larger and larger, <clears throat> the bots are going to have to travel farther and farther to build it. So, you know, once once we're building solar, like up here, <laughs> it's going to take a long time for the bots to grab this stuff and travel over there and build it. So, um, so if you're relying if you're relying heavily on solar power to power your base, you you really need to stay ahead of of your expansion, right? So if you're if you're getting ready to start adding to your factory, probably a good idea to expand your solar first. Okay, so now we got three done. And like I said, you can do this from map view. Just grab your blueprint, plop a couple down, and then go do something else. And your bots will take care of it while you're having fun somewhere else. Okay, let's go back up here so we can make more acid. Let me get, get my spider tron out of the way. Okay. Alright, so let's... I'm just going to take this apart completely and start from scratch. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, what is this? Oh, okay. This is my incoming petroleum. And that's the outgoing acid. Okay. So for the sulfur, I just need water and petroleum. And then for the acid, I just need sulfur, water, and iron. And I need five sulfur per second for each machine. Sulfur is made two per second. So I, if I have five sulfur machines, I can feed two I can feed two acid machines. All right. So you go over here, actually. I'll make it over here. 
so I have some room. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Nope, I need space in between. One, two, three, four, five. from here. I guess we can continue to do that. And then the water I can take from here. making acid ah I know what I can do let's see I need one plate per second or I need two plates for per second since there's two of them this is going to give me one plate every one and a half seconds I think Crafting speed is 2. Crafting time is 3.2. Yeah, so every 1.6 seconds I'll get one plate from these guys. So I'm going to need... I'm going to need two furnaces for each. each 1.6 yeah up. All right. And then we'll do that and that. Let's let's move that over a bit. That'll give me a little bit more room to get the acid out. Okay, now for these.
There. I think that's rather elegant. Uh, okay, these are actually these are actually getting backed up on the output. Am I making too much sulfur? Oh, I am making too much sulfur. Because so I get two every second, so I'm making ten per second. No, that's right, I need ten per second. Two every one second times five, that's ten. These take five every second. Five, ten. Okay. So why are these backing up? Probably just because I've been running the sulfur longer than I've been running the acid. Okay, so I hope that's enough. All right, where were we? Let's see how we're doing on the solar. Okay. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five built. Now for the next step, we could speed this up a bit. You know, again, if we don't mind perhaps waiting for some incomplete sections to build, let's just copy all five. Okay, and the bots will destroy cliffs as well. If you hold down the shift key, they'll bring cliff explosives and take out the cliffs. All right, and you can see that the the location of these roboports make it so that they completely cover the next section, which allows the next section to get built. So it's a great design. It's a great design. Um, you know, and there, if you go to what is it, factorioprints.com. I mean, if you search on Google, you can find lots of different solar panel designs um, or you can try to build your own. Like I said, I, I've tried to build my own my own arrangement that would achieve the same result, and I'm, I don't know. I just could never, I could never come up with something that didn't have, you know, gaps in it, you know, extra spaces and things like that. So that's one of the things I really like about this design is that there are no gaps anywhere. Uh, when you build it, it's just solid wall-to-wall -wall panels and accumulators. Now, the uh, the drawback of that is that you can't walk through it. Right. <laughs> but I'm guessing that you can spider across it. Yeah. So that's great. So you can still move through it with your spider tron. Or if you have an airplane mod or something like that. You can go through it. Um, you know, you might, as you're building, you you might want to leave, you might want to leave a gap every once in a while, um, so that you can travel through it. Um, you could still build it that way, right? So as long as the next set of roboports are connected. Or, let's put it this way, as long as the next set of roboports is within the green range. So you can see that the green range for this roboport goes all the way up about even with this cliff. So I could, I could build in a gap. Well, you would want it to be connected. So you could, as long as the, robo, as long as the robot network is connected, you can build a gap. Um... It probably wouldn't need to be that big. In fact, you could maybe, if you needed space to move, you could maybe just make a two-tile tie, two tile wide or three-tile wide gap. Um, in fact, I would go with three just to be safe, and that way you could even run, you could run a rail through it. If you, so you can run a train through it if you need to. <clears throat> I would make it three wide because the thing with rails is... You never know which tile it's going to land on because the rails move around in two tile increments. So if you make a three gap, 
Uh, here, a two gap would work perfectly because it's the next uh, the next set of two tiles is right next to it. But you might not always get so lucky. Oh, there, it's good. Maybe I just got lucky with <laughs> where I chose to build it. Yeah. All right. So if I had built this one tile shifted, then if I had built all this one tile higher, I wouldn't be able to put rail right here because this accumulator would be touching one tile. So I would have to build it up here, which is two tiles higher. So I would either, if you're, if you're planning to build a gap for a rail, I would either check to see where your rail wants to go um, or just make it three tiles wide. If you make it three tiles wide, if you make the gap three tiles wide, then you'll always have enough room for a rail. Even if it's, you know, no matter how it's lined up. Okay, so that's, um, that's solar power in a nutshell. And this is building out a lot faster than I expected it would. So let's see how we're doing now. Okay, so now I've got 4.2 gigajoules of solar. I'm still using a lot of steam power. Okay, so now you can see we're getting to nighttime, so my solar is going down to zero. Um, my steam can still make enough power, so I'm not consuming any energy from the accumulators. Okay, so now let's go and see what happens when we turn off steam power. Now I've built one, two, three, four, five. I've built 10 of those. So that should give me about 40 megawatts, right? Which is right about what we're using. So I should be able to turn the steam power off and be okay. So what I'm gonna do is I will come down here and I'm just gonna disconnect the water pipes. And then the boilers will run out of steam and they'll shut down. I prefer doing that to turning off steam power rather than just cutting it from the grid because it's, I don't know, I just prefer it. <laughs> Clean that up. Don't need that anymore. Okay. All right, so now we can see the steam power starting to drop. Okay, we're consuming 40, a little over 40 megawatts, which so far I am able to provide with the solar panels themselves. Okay. So right now we're running purely off of solar. Now, earlier I talked about what are the advantages to solar power. Um, one of them is that it's very, it's very easy to build. All you have to do is plop them down and they work. They don't require any fuel or anything like that. You just have to build the panels and the accumulators and you've got your energy. Um, the other advantage is that it's very easy on the game itself. Um, like you can see now, I've got a, th a thousand plus solar panels and I've got 841 accumulators. Um, the game treats these as essentially one huge solar panel and one huge accumulator and one huge accumulator. They all work, um, they all work in concert with one another. So the game doesn't have to make separate calculations for each one. Whereas with steam power, the game has to make calculations for all the fluid flowing through the pipes and generating steam and the steam flowing through the turbines. And so it's heavier on the CPU um, to run, especially when you get into nuclear. Um, it, it's a much higher load on the CPU to run that than it is to run solar. So for very large bases, if you don't have, if you don't have a really, you know, a really powerful computer, solar will be 
a good option for you because it'll it'll allow you to get you know for the game to run well and and get good frame rates even as uh, you build a very large base um, so that's one reason why a lot of people like to use solar um, it also doesn't create any pollution which is good for keeping biter attacks in check um, nuclear power is fairly clean as well but it does produce some pollution um, steam power obviously is the dirtiest since you have to burn things for it to work um, this generates quite a lot of pollution which we can see from our map right we're polluting the whole planet here and a lot of that well most of our pollution is coming from <laughs> is coming from our power generation and our smelting of course so um ooh, i'm gonna want to get ahead of that where's my spider i have upgraded my spider tron by the way i've got rockets in it now and I put in some laser defense and Mark II shields. Um, so it's quite good at destroying enemies. This is really cool. Watch this. It does burn through rockets pretty fast, but <laughs> but the results are pretty nice. Uh, and in fact, you could send it unmanned to take out biter bases. Although I suppose you want to be careful that it does you don't uh, you don't overdo it. And you don't want to get destroyed. But uh, anyway, so that's solar. Um, hope you found this useful. If you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments. Uh, in fact, I think I'm going to put down, I'm going to throw down another array. Now here is one little issue with it. Um, eventually you get outside of radar range and have trouble building. Um, so what I'll do sometimes is um, from time to time I will remove one of the roboports and put a radar in its place. You could also remove a couple accumulators to put down a radar. Um, in fact, that might be better. Uh, the radar is 3x3 three three, and since we have an excess of accumulators, let's remove Let's remove those four accumulators. Uh, no, I don't want to make that many. Let's just make one. And then I'll throw a radar right there. Because uh, if you try to build here where there's no radar coverage, it the blueprint won't go down. So we'll wait for this radar to get placed. Ah, oh, come on. There we go. And then I'll throw down another set of five solar blocks. And wait for the bots to do their thing. And we'll just continue to expand like that. Let's see how we're doing on power. Okay, well it's nighttime. The lights are on. Accumulator charge is going down. Um, solar panels are... Oh no, we're in trouble. <laughs> we are out of power now. I think I must have had turrets firing. Or maybe it's because the bots are building that the... Uh, 
the robo ports are charging and it's using a lot of energy. So I'm going to keep um, I'm going to keep the steam power running along with the solar for now. Eventually, we'll get enough solar built that we have plenty of additional capacity. And then we won't have to worry about that so much. Okay, so now we're pulling 170 megawatts because we're recharging the accumulators. So as long as, as long as the accumulators need charge, then your power production will run at full capacity until, until the batteries are charged, and then it'll and then it'll drop back down again. On consumption, you can see here that my RoboPorts are consuming 35 megawatts. And like I said, I, I think that that's because the bots are building and they're, there's a lot of bots being recharged all at the same time. Um, we can wait and see see what happens once uh, this gets finished building, and then we should see the RoboPort power consumption drop down. Let's just wait a moment and see what happens there. Yeah. See now the RoboPorts are not even on the, not even on the list. Accumulators almost charged. We still have a few more to put down, and those are probably still being built. Okay, but now you can see we're making 80, 80 something megawatts with solar, and we're only making about twenty megawatts with the steam engine. All right, so the steam engine's running very lightly now, and it's we're getting most of our power from solar. And it only took about fifty minutes to do it. Okay, so um, that's going to do it for the episode. I am going to leave the game running, and I'm going to add, I'll probably add another another set of five on top of this between now and the next episode. And then uh, we'll get into something else. I think, I think it's about time that we start building rocket parts so that we can get our rocket launched. And then uh, we'll do some nuclear power and see what else it is that that we need to take a look at. I'll start working my way over there just in case my help is needed. Yep. Okay, well thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.